Hello, everybody. I'm Professor Tim Spector from the Zoe Health Study, and I'm reporting you today from very sweaty Paris. A fortnight ago, I brought you breaking news about COVID rates. And now this week, we've got a significant update to report. For the first time ever, new daily COVID cases have exceeded 350,000 new cases a day, being the highest uh, rates on record. And we're talking to you about what this means and if it's showing any signs of slowing down, because none of us really expected this. Also, we're talking to you about the variants that are causing uh, this historic wave and who at the moment is at greatest risk. Also giving a little bit of insights into the latest snippet of information from our diet and menopause study and how those habits uh, could affect symptoms of the menopause. So let's uh, get into the data. If we look at the uh, graphs here, we can see that um, this peak, which had already been reached in Scotland and Wales uh, last week, finally made it uh, above this uh, historic levels that we had at the end of March. And this is a 23 percent increase from uh, two weeks ago. Now the R number, that's the sort of the gauge is how fast things are increasing, is still 1.1. So things are still increasing on average. So we're going to expect more uh, rises. This translates into one in 15 of you out there currently down with COVID. It's one in 13 in Scotland and it's different by age groups. So we know that about one in 10 uh, younger adults and children are currently affected. Now, I don't want everyone to panic because clearly it's a much milder disease on average than it was in the, the early days, a couple of years ago, and people are not dying of it, but it is still very unpleasant. And uh, people do need to know that there's a high risk of getting infected at the moment even if you've already had it. Now, the uh, hospitalization rate, which is the, the main thing we worry about at the moment with the NHS, uh, is actually going up as well, about 300 cases admitted per day, more than this time last week. It's currently over 1,500 uh, cases a day. And once it gets to about 2,000, then this does start to pose uh, significant problems. And of course, you've got to remember staff shortages as well. And it's gonna, this is, you know, this 28% increase is gonna keep causing problems because there's always a lag. And so even when the rates stop, it's gonna continue. So I think we're gonna see some problems in a number of hospitals uh, in the next month. Now, um, the good news is how the deaths are continuing to fall, and that's not a major problem. Now, if we look at the different age groups, you can see that, again, this wave was driven by uh, the kids in blue, and but, the, uh, but all ages have been going up. It's good to see that it looks like that those rates in children are dropping off, and hopefully that is going to be helped by the summer holidays and uh, hope to see some declines then. But of course, uh, we've still got the summer festivals going on and uh, these infections are gonna keep uh, coming back. Um, in the regions, um, all regions really show an increase. Uh, as I've said before, Scotland seems to have had the worst of this, but they seem to be slightly ahead of the rest of the UK and they're now um, showing no further increases, which is great news, and expect the other regions to follow suit. Um, now, something else interesting we've forgotten about is uh, people saying they've got summer colds. Oh, I've got a summer cold. It doesn't feel like COVID. Um, I'm fine. Well, you remember this graph where we plotted um, positive versus negative COVID cases with the same symptoms, you can see from the blue line going up that you're now twice as likely uh, if you have any cold-like symptoms to have COVID than to have any other type of virus. 
and we haven't seen this really ever before. Um, and so uh, it's important to realize that and assume you've probably got COVID, try and get a test if you can, if you can't, or as we are hearing anecdotes of people saying uh, that their tests have been negative for the first few days, probably best to assume you've got it uh, and stay away from other people uh, until you're feeling better. Um, now, a lot of people are asking about reinfections, and this is uh, quite hard to, to get. So anecdotally, a lot of people, again, reinfected, even if they've had uh, uh, an infection three months ago. So we're not getting this lasting immunity that we had in the first year of the, of the pandemic, when very few of these cases, because these new variants really are uh, very effective at getting around our immune defences. And from your data, we can now see that um, slightly more than 30% of, of new cases in the under seven in the under 18s are uh, reinfections. That's pretty similar in the under uh, 54s. And then it drops off so that once you get over 55, it's less than 10% uh, are reinfections. Most are new infections of people who thought they would never get it thought they have amazing new immune systems. And we all know people like that. Uh, unfortunately, there seems to be a variant for everybody. And we are hearing of people getting multiple mild infections. Uh, we don't quite know how common that is. And it's all down to this complicated picture of variants we have across the country here now, because uh, it's not like there's one dominant variant now. We're seeing uh, different, we've seen BA2, BA4, and BA5 variants. Uh, and in particular, the BA5.1 variant, all having an impact. And none of them are really dominating. Uh, BA5.1 is about 20%, uh, BA4 and 5 around 60%. And, and we've still got BA2 hanging on in there. And so with all these coexisting variants, it's like there's one variant that can get through nearly everyone's uh, defense system. So uh, the way these new ones are working is they're, they're both uh, evading the immune defenses and they're also dampening them down. So they're making sure that you don't get that inflammation at first to stop it. Very, very clever, unfortunately. So we're, we're still investigating how long protection from these variants lasts and how effective these vaccines and boosters are. But it's a very confused picture and my, my colleagues at KCL are working hard at this and we'll give you those answers when we can. Now, symptoms, everyone asks me, well, oh, I'm getting some rather unusual symptoms. Is this the new variant? Well, it's very hard to tell because we've got at least you know, three or four different variants in circulation at the moment. And uh, really impossible to, to work out which uh, one is causing which symptoms at the moment because no one's being uh, tested for each variant. And we've also changed the daily flow and so our data aren't strictly comparable to where they were, but it's still useful to see that uh, the top five symptoms are sore throat, headache, blocked nose, uh, cough and runny nose and the uh, traditional ones of fever, loss of smell are ranked 16 and, and number 20. So it's still appearing just as it was before the cold, but it seems to be lots of variations. And anecdotally, it looks like muscle aches seem to be uh, much commoner than they perhaps were uh, about six months ago. So we're gonna keep looking at this. Once one of those variants reaches about 85%, we can give a clearer picture. So do keep uh, giving us this data. Uh, quick news about those of you, for those of you who filled out our uh, menopause survey uh, and diet, um, we'll be looking at sleep habits, eating windows, et cetera. And we're getting through this data, it's very complicated. So far, um, the main thing we're seeing is that uh, snacking seems to be quite important. So, uh, there is a significant positive association in perimenopausal women who 
do like to have more snacks, experiencing more menopausal symptoms than women who don't snack, even after you adjust it for diet quality and uh, body mass index, uh, amount of weight and age. So that's really interesting. We're trying to work out um, more about this really close relationship between what you eat and uh, what your menopausal symptoms are. Now, are there any twins out there? Uh, we think there are. And we sent an email to uh, anyone who we thought might be a twin a few weeks ago to join the Twins UK registry that I uh, started with my colleagues 30 years ago now, uh, the largest in the UK. And thanks to everyone who signed up, we've had about uh, 624 people who have agreed and we're waiting for a few other responses. If you haven't signed up yet uh, and received the email, please do so or let us know that you want to be, you know about uh, twins, we're looking at same sex twins, whether identical or not identical, uh, to join the uh, twin uh, UK registry. We'd love to have you in the study, it's incredibly important. And uh, it, you are absolutely unique and uh, can be a great help to, to medical research. Um, so in conclusion, uh, COVID cases have reached record highs. Uh, one in 10 young people now have it. This means a high risk for everybody out there. Um, we do expect them to peak soon. Um, hopefully Scotland, has peaked and so the rest of England, I think uh, within a week will have peaked, but it's still gonna stay high. This means hospitalizations are gonna run on uh, and cause problems. Um, do it, get out there, enjoy the sunshine um, and uh, make sure you're in a well-ventilated place. Don't go anywhere near anyone with cold-like symptoms, please. Do wear good quality FFP2 masks. If you're in crowded or poorly ventilated areas, uh, if you're going in public transport, and particularly in those overcrowded airports where they really should have those as rules, um, because the risks really are very high. Uh, do keep logging these symptoms uh, so we can keep track of the spread and these new variants. Uh, really important, and we get more information uh, like been giving us. Uh, we're going to look forward to getting some more information about these vaccines, which are supposed to be coming out in the next few weeks, giving updates. Um, but uh, I look forward to telling you more in the next video. So please remember to like and subscribe our channel, share the app with friends and family, and finally support science and keep logging. Thank you.